I'm Jeanette Keynes. I'm an instructor here at Jewelry Arts Institute. And I'm here today to talk about acetylene torches. Acetylene torches are really our most important tool. And it's very important to learn how to use them safely and to understand them. And it's very important to us here at Jewelry Arts that everything be safe. So we're going to start right in with how to turn them on and we'll go from there. I have two B tanks here in front of us. The B tanks are the medium sized tank. Um, they're really called B because they used to be used on buses to light the headlights, believe it or not. Um, this is the most commonly used size in our studio. Um, if you see plumbers actually come into your house, they use these kind of tanks as well. I have here two different kinds of regulator. This is the more modern type that shows you the gas pressure as well as how much gas is in the actual tank. And this is the older version, which some of you may have at home, and it really just shows you what's in the tank, and then you adjust the gas pressure using the regulator right here. An important thing to remember about your tanks is they must be stored upright and used upright. You want to make sure that they don't fall over at any, at any time, really, especially when you're about to use them. If they do fall over when they're being stored, you want to put them back upright and leave them for probably about 20 minutes to half an hour before you start to use them. When I use my tank, I have it attached right to my bench using a bungee cord. That way I can't accidentally knock it over. To turn my tank on, I'm going to use my tank key right here. I use a low-tech but effective rubber band to make sure it stays with my tank. Right on the little peg there. I grab it, I push it away from myself. That's counterclockwise, just until it gives. It's not necessary to keep opening and opening. Now, you notice when it came on, it shows me how much gas I have in the tank and also how much gas pressure. Um, it's very easy to see by looking at this regulator that anything above 15 is too high. We usually set ours around 10. Now, let me show you how to set it. This actually came on and is working just great, but it's the regulator right here that adjusts it. I'm gonna use a striker to light my torch. It's just a little flint on the end and it's a little rough wheel in there. When I squeeze it, applying a little bit of friction, it's gonna create a spark for me. To turn my torch on, this is the little valve right here that lets the gas come out. I'm going to pull it forward just till I hear a small hiss. You don't want too much gas coming out or else what it's going to do is it'll stutter. It'll blow itself out as it's trying to light and it'll make kind of a, kind of a spitting noise at you. It doesn't mean anything's wrong, it just means you have to turn it down a little bit before you light it. I find 10 PSI to be about perfect, so that's where I put my tank. I'm going to show you how to change tips. All you have to do is make sure it's off first. You just spin that open and pop it out. Set it down, have your next tip, kind of press it in, and twist this nice and tight. One of the most important safety um, routines really that you can get into with your tank is this. Every time you pick up your torch to use it, Give this a little squeeze. Make sure your tip is on nice and tight. Although it happens rarely, what can happen if you continue to use it and it loosens and it loosens and it loosens and you're sitting it down and it loosens. Eventually, if you lit it, what could happen is the force of the gas could actually blow this off. A big fountain of flame would come out of here and it would scare you to death. So, most important thing you can do to be safe is every time you pick up your torch, give it a little squeeze right here at the tip to make sure it's on nice and tight. How you tell what tip you're going to use is depends on what project you're doing. For example, if you're doing um, some annealing of a large project, you're going to want a number one tip. If you're doing fusing of very tiny little links, you're probably going to want a double zero. Um, the tips that you're going to use most often, that we use most often here at JAI, are double zero, zero, and one. I'm going to light them all up for you so you can see how big they are. How you can tell actually which tip it is, is right here. After the little dash, right above our little spinner here that takes our tip on and off, you can see it says double zero. So the double zero tip, which I'll go ahead and light, you can see is a small tip. If you're trying to solder a larger piece, something like that, you're not gonna use this. This is really just for very small work. The zero tip is probably the tip we use here most often. You can fuse with it, you can solder with it if the piece isn't too large, and you'll probably find a zero tip is what you use most of the time, I would say 85% of the time. This is a one tip. You're going to use this for soldering larger pieces like maybe a bracelet, 
something like that, where you really need more heat. Also, if you're kneeling, what you tend to do is use a larger flame, but put it on softer pressure so it's kind of a bushy flame like this, so you get a gentle annealing and you don't run the risk of actually starting your piece to melt. If you smell gas when you're working and you feel that you might have a leak, what you can do is just use soapy water. You use some dish detergent and a little bit of water. You can kind of just shake it around until you get some foam. And put your soapy foam on all of your joints. Now, if you turn your tank on and it starts to actively bubble, then you know that that's where you have a leak. You need to turn off your tank, tighten up that area, re-soap it, check it again. It's a very easy way to tell if you have any little leaks anywhere. If you've checked your handle and you don't have any leaks and you still smell gas, then you want to go down and check your actual tank. The two main areas are near the pin and where we insert the screw right here to the regulator. We're going to use a little soapy water on there. So you would first turn the tank off, then you would soap it up, then we'll turn the tank on. If when we turn the tank on, the soap starts to bubble up, we know we have a link there. We need to turn off the tank tighten it up, and try it again with the soapy water until we have everything nice and tight. There's only one other place your tank really can be leaking from, and that would be right at the stem. Now, there's nothing that you can do about that. So if you do get bubbles there and, and it leaks, what you want to do is turn off your tank. You want to take off the regulator, take it out to the open air so that the gas can just slowly dissipate, and then you're going to return it to where you bought it from and tell them that your tank had a leak, and hopefully they'll give you a full one instead. One of the other really central things to remember about the torch, that if you keep this in mind, you'll be just fine, is don't have it on unless you're looking at it. Now that sounds really, really obvious, but let me show you exactly what happens to people when they get too engrossed in their work. They'll light up their torch, they're soldering away. Did that solder flow? Wait, what's that? And before you know it, this is out here. If you have somebody else in the studio with you, it's no way to make friends. So the minute that your eyes are not on the flame, turn it off, put it down, and then you can look at your piece at your leisure. It's very easy to get so caught up in what you're doing that you stop paying close attention to the torch. Another important thing to remember is when you turn your torch off, make sure it's actually off all the way before you set it down. Turn it off, look at it, make sure it's completely out before you set it down. I can't tell you how many students over the years have turned it mostly off, and there's still a little bit at the end, and they'll, they'll kind of set it down, and it can actually ignite because a lot of times people will have paper towels or sandpaper, things like that on their bench. People in their studios use a lot of different substances to work on top of. For example, here we have a fire brick and a soldering board on top of it. Um, at home, um, you can use things like tiles. You just want to make sure that you're soldering and working on top of a surface that can't easily ignite. Um, these surfaces are wood, but they're very hard butcher block and they don't ignite easily. And we don't work on, directly on top of them. We work on top of these blocks or inside the kiln. If you use a kiln like we do here, you also want to make sure not to change your tip so ultra close to a heat source. These kilns get to be around 1600 degrees. So when you're going to change your tip, it's just for safety. You want to turn away from that heat source a little bit. It's also very important that if you're changing tips, you don't take the tip out and then go across the room looking for the tip that you want to put in. You really want a tip to be in here at all times, just like this. Now, at the end of the day, when you're all done, you want to turn off your tank and you want to drain all of the gas that's left in the hose. It's really the safest way to make sure that you never have any accidents is to just never take any shortcuts. Turn it off at the end of the night, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that and how to drain out all the gas safely. To turn it off, I put the key on the peg, go clockwise until it won't go anymore. That turns it off right here, but there's still gas inside the hose. So I'm going to light it and let it run for a minute. What that's going to do, it's going to use up all of the gas that's in the hose until my regulators go all the way down to zero. That's how I know there's no available gas. Once it pretty much is about to go out, just turn it off. My regulators are down to zero. What I do in my own studio is that once I've turned my tank off and I've emptied all the gas out of the hose, I just hang my hose right on the tank 
What I do in my own studio is I only hang it here when it's turned off and emptied. That's a signal to myself that if it's sitting out on the bench, it hasn't been done. Also, when using a torch, you want to follow basic studio safety standards. Tie your hair back. You want to have a bowl of water ready. You want to always have a fire extinguisher in the studio just so that you're prepared for any kind of emergency. It's our goal here at Jewelry Arts to replace the fear of the torch with a proper understanding of safety so that you can use it safely and you can make fantastic jewelry. So happy soldering from all of us here at Jewelry Arts.